Okay. The first thing that you do with a with a client that you've never met, what might that be besides the necessary paperwork? <laughs> when you actually get to what you consider, well, it actually starts when you're doing the paperwork. What's one of the first things that you need to do with a client? Okay, build rapport, and what was the comments here? Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Well, it's part of, very good, those are subsets of engaging the client. Engaging the client. And um, what we found in other workshops that we've done like this, that that's kind of a difficult one, so we ended up spending a lot of time on can you tell when your client is engaged? And a lot of people really, they think just because they're facing you or repeating a sentence or giving you an answer to a question doesn't really mean they're engaged. So you, you need to engage, might be through an introduction, and you're going to be using body language when you do that. It's very difficult with, with physicians. They've got this new thing where they do their notes on a computer, and guess where the computer is as compared to there's the patient on the table or in the chair. Guess where the computer is? Over here on the wall. So while they're, at the very best, they can kind of look over their shoulder like this. It's horrific. So that's when they're engaging the patient. They come in, pull up the material, start looking at your thing. Their back is to you. <laughs> so engaging the client, and that is just getting him in horse language. We call it hooked on. Get them hooked on. You know you've got them with you. They're fully paying attention. They're focused on whatever you want them to be focused on at the time. So engage. Um, eye contact through self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised how many people don't use it appropriately. And I will tell you one thing, if for brightness purposes you need to um, wear sunglasses, I can respect that, that's okay, but the horse needs to read you, your client needs to read you, and you don't have sunglasses on in a um, therapy session inside, although some people, movie stars do that, don't they? <laughs> They're inside, it's 8 o'clock at night, and they've got sunglasses on, I'm going, what is that? <laughs> so, um, uh, so using eye contact appropriately is thinking in this setting, but if you're uncomfortable with the brightness or have an eye condition, we're okay with that. But the horse, the ho the, your client is reading you, just remember that. So you, too many therapists want to hide themselves because they're uneasy or they're new to this, they're unsure of themselves. And that's the worst thing that you can do. It just puts up a barrier between yourself and your client. Um, showing confidence, that's what we're talking about here. It kind of fits in with congruity. Everybody know what congruity is as we use that word? Your insides have to match your outsides. And if you come in all frustrated, just had a fight with your, with your spouse or, or a coworker and so forth, and you try to put this facade on of calmness and happiness and so forth, Horses can read that immediately. Clients can read that to you. They may not be able to verbally report that to you. You have some curious horses. Um, but they can read it. So showing confidence, you've got to get confidence first. You've got to get confidence first to uh, show it, but that's very important. Um, the working alliance. We'll translate like that a bit as trust. That's the therapeutic piece, right? Everyone's familiar with that term, the therapeutic alliance or the therapeutic relationship. So a lot of this is going to be able to show you how good you are at building a relationship with these animals. There are animals of prey. A lot of people don't realize that about horses, and the reason they're so perfect for this kind of work, they aren't like a dog or a cat. Those are predators. Animals of prey are afraid all the time. They don't trust initially, and it's up to you to demonstrate through consistency, persistence sometimes, <laughs> um, uh, that they can trust you. So that's a part of building the working alliance that we'll be working on. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, mirroring emotions. We're familiar with that. If the client, you can do that through body posture too. Um, we'll be working on that today. Uh, fostering curiosity because you want your client to be interested what the next step is or let's explore this area that might be causing you some problems. Horses, you can bring that out in them too as your clients to see if you can get some natural curiosity by doing something different with your body. Missy, the other day, she just discovered we had a tire in there. Just by standing the tire up, 
and looking at it from a different angle, all of a sudden her client became incredibly interested. What's mm -hmm. going on here and so forth? Mm -hmm. um, setting, setting goals and expectations, we'll want you to do that in your exercise. Just pick something, pick a goal. And then flexibility comes in there. What if you can't get, you see this goal is not workable at this time, or it would be more helpful to change goals, flexibility, plan B, plan, plan F. F. Um, pacing, very important in therapy because if things kind of get going and the client slows down, what are you going to do? If he starts talking about sports and, and it's, it's an avoidance kind of issue. Well, it would have been helpful if you'd have done something before he totally stopped. This is what we were talking about a little bit earlier about being able to read intentionality. If you can tell your client is getting uncomfortable, you ought to read that before he's already got to where he's ready to get up out of the room and leave. That's reading intentionality. These barometers, these, <laughs> these big brown barometers will tell you that if you learn to focus, track and scan, what, what we call it, you can hone those skills. Uh, so before we might have you in here with a horse going around, you are to um, create a pace that you think is appropriate and keep your client at that pace. And the secret is what you're really doing has nothing to do with horse training. It has everything to do with can I read when he's thinking about speeding up or when he's thinking about slowing down and do something to change that and maintain that same pace. So you're really honing generalized skills here. We're not making you into horse trainers or cowboys or anything. You're just utilizing the horse <laughs> because they're perfect instruments. They reflect back to you because they're animals of prey. They're afraid all the time. They're very, very sensitive to anything in your environment, in anything in their environment, and they will tell you. Their feedback is clean. It's what, Missy? All of their feedback from horses? Accurate, honest, non-judgmental, immediate. Yes. They'll tell you. Because if you quote, made a mistake, if we want to interpret it that way, you'll know it. We won't have to tell you. Dr. Courtney won't tell they you. They let you know <laughs> right they'll away. They'll let you know when there's a rupture in the therapeutic room. Yes. There you go. There you go. And you want to be looking at that. And, and um, uh, you're not going to get feedback from us unless you might ask for some. And sometimes I just can't help myself. <laughs> but um, it's mainly the horses that's going to be giving you feedback. So pacing, you can work on therapeutic pacing in here. Um, setting boundaries is a tremendous one. If there was one problem that led to to most of the mental health problems, in, in particularly in our society, it's setting boundaries. Your client doesn't know how to set boundaries. Abuse issues, it, it's all about setting boundaries. In therapy, you have to set boundaries. You have to say, we have 50 minutes. You have to set that boundary. Some people have a hard time as burgeoning psychotherapists being able to get to the issues soon enough because most clients will wait until about 40 minutes into the session before they really allow you to get to the good stuff and then you've got to. So, so timing, very important. This is the perfect classroom for timing. Uh, you're to insert yourself and confront and interject. That's another clinical skill. Your timing has to be right. With horses, your timing has to be right on target. So we might set up a goal to just have the client understand something. You want him to move from this side to the other. You might get some energy going, but your timing to, maybe you would want to stop him over here. So you can work on timing beautifully. You'll see how that plays out. Pacing boundaries, interjecting, use of metaphors. The horse is a metaphor. And if you do, you're working on your own clinical skills today. But if you came to a different workshop to learn how to do equine assisted psychotherapy, what you're going to learn is how to use the horse as a metaphor. I mean, today they're a metaphor for a client, <laughs> so I guess we're still working metaphors. But you would use the horse as a metaphor. He might be the problem. He might be the solution to the problem. He might be a coworker. He might be a spouse to your client. We don't know, um, but the use of metaphors, everybody appreciate the use of metaphors? Incredibly powerful, in part because they're indirect. If you directly confront the client with some, something, many times it's intimidating. They'll put up a wall, a barrier, 